Hey, how's it going guys? Back again in the final whistle and today we're going to be going all the way to London to Tottenham Hotspur to talk about Harry Kane who's finally put in a transfer request. I feel like this is a long time coming. I didn't really expect Harry Kane to put in a transfer request because he was obviously grown in Tottenham. He is obviously a Tottenham boy. That's why he stuck around for so long. But the relationship he has with the fans, it's so tight and so tightly woven that you would have never expected him to put in a transfer request, or I didn't at least, because I didn't think he would... He's the kind of guy who doesn't want to hurt his relationship with the fans. And I don't think he has with putting in a transfer request. I think Tottenham fans respect him so much, and they have him so highly on such a high pedestal that he can never ruin that respect he has in Tottenham. And to put in a transfer request, I think he had to do it. I think this was the time he had to go for it, seeing that no manager really wants to join Tottenham after Jose's left. Ryan Mason does not look like he's up to it. I know him and Kerry Kane are so tight, such good friends, but Harry Kane's got to take a step away. He's got to leave. I think Harry Kane could easily be one of the best England strikers ever to play in Premier League history, but if you want to be talked about as one of the best ever Premier League players, Premier League strikers, English players, talk about like the likes of Wayne Rooney, Thierry Henry, Alan Shearer, Eric Cantona, those guys you got to win a Premier League title, or a trophy at all. And I don't see Harry Kane leaving the Premier League. I see he has three destinations. Obviously, both the Manchester clubs are up there easily. And I see him staying in London, maybe, with the blue side of London, Chelsea. I'm going to give you my ranking for the teams and where I think he might end up. Manchester City, I have fallen to number three out of the top three on that ranking list. I see Manchester City easily falling to number three. Oh, not easily. Any, any of these teams could easily sign him. But Manchester City, I have number three. Because for one sole reason. Manchester City are a team that doesn't like to really sway off their transfer plans. For years, if you follow soccer. Football, exactly. Sorry, my bad. Manchester City are known for signing your 60s, your 70 million, or an 80 million player they did in Ruben Diaz, which is very rare for them. Or they sign your 40 million, 45 million players. They don't go out and sign a guy who's 150 million plus. They've never done that before, ever. City always spend money. Everyone talks about them, the oil club, the oil spending money, just like PSG. But they've never gone out and signed a guy for 100 million plus. And Ruben Diaz was an exception to 80 million, which is 80 million, which is still... Still, it's high, but it's not like some other big clubs around Europe. And for City to go sign Harry Kane and sway off those transfer plans and to guy get a guy for like Harry Kane for 150 million plus is something I can never see City doing. And kudos to them if they want to go do it, go do it. Because I think if you get Harry Kane in, he's that key. He's going to be molding that team together. Last piece of that jigsaw puzzle. And I think if Pep Guardiola gets him in, they're winning the league for the next five, six years plus. Because that's, fa- that's just a fantastic team he already has. And to bring Harry Kane in is unbelievable. And you got one of the best strikers in the world, or the best striker in the world, however you want to look at it. Team I have is number two. Staying in Manchester. My club, Manchester United. The reason I have a, a number two and not lower is simply because... The Glazers need to win the fans back. And the only way they can win the fans back here is bringing in a marquee signing. And for the Glazers, they're always known to want to bring in a marquee signing that's going to boost those jersey sales so they can get the revenue in. That's just how the Glazers work. They don't think the fans, they think of themselves in their own pockets. Simply, the only reason I see him coming in is because is they want to somehow rekindle it. And yes, I'd love Harry Kane, but United obviously don't need number nine. Mason Greenwood can play there. Marcus Rashford obviously just signed Edison Cavani to another year extension. He is one of the best strikers in the Premier League, in my opinion. So why? You could obviously go for Harry Kane, sure. But why upgrade when you already have that position covered? Go get yourself a Declan Rice, a Rafael Varane, a Jaden Sancho. But... Like I said, the only reason I have them so high up here is simply because the Glazers want to make that signing. That's going to make the fans happy and bring in the revenue, and that's why I have my number two, because I feel like we could easily spend $150 million and use up all of our transfer budget on one player. My number one destination that I think Harry Kane is going to go to, and I believe he will end up there, but like I said, he could end up in any three of these teams. It's really anyone's best guess, and this is my best guess. He's going to end up at Chelsea. He's obviously already in London. And I see him still staying in London. I don't see him moving too far away from home. I see him going straight to London. I see 
Chelsea are a team that struggles for leaders, just like Manchester United. On the pitch, they got Cesar Azpilicueta, and they have Thiago Silva. And Thiago Silva is obviously trying to sign a one-year extension. Fair play to him. He's a fantastic player. But besides those two guys, you don't got many leaders. Those two guys are at the end of their careers. Harry Kane is still... He's Yes, he's getting up there to his 30. 30-year-old, 30 but my bad. But he still is a very good leader. He's a fantastic goal scorer. He's one of the best strikers in the world with his head volleying free kicks in front of net. His tactical analysis is unbelievable. Combination play, one-twos, playing through the lines, his creativity. You can't ask for much more here. And for a guy like Thomas Tuchel, Thomas Tuchel would work miracles with Harry Kane. And to see Harry Kane, Mason Mount, Ziyech, Christian Pulisic, Timo Werner, Kai Havertz, Attacking football and goals you'll see next year under Thomas Tuchel's side with a full preseason will be unbelievable. And I see Roman Abramovich is not one to be afraid of spending the money and being ruthless in the transfer window as we saw last year. And I would big up to Roman if he can make this happen, and I think he will. And I see Christian Pulisic being Harry Kane's sonny at Chelsea. I could easily see them having that same kind of link-up play because Christian Pulisic is unbelievable. And I think he's even faster than Son. So I think that even makes it even more deadly. And then that attacking combo will score even more goals than Sonny and Harry Kane. Yes, it is a bold prediction. And yes, I do think it will happen. I think Harry Kane is going to one of those three clubs. I do think Chelsea is the most likely. But easily any of those teams could very much happen. Those are my opinions, guys. Those are my thoughts on where Harry Kane will go if he does get to leave. Which I hope he does. Everyone wants, wants to see him leave Spurs. Give me your thoughts and opinions down below, guys. I'd love to hear from the comments. Give a like and subscribe. I love the... Uh, Love the activity on the channel, and it makes me so happy, guys. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you for the next one. We've got a lot more fun content coming. See you guys, and see you in the next one. Bye for now.